My name is Patrick Kingsley uh, and I'm the Migration Correspondent for The Guardian, which means that I report on the refugee crisis. Um, and I have a new book out, it's called The New Odyssey, and it's about the European refugee crisis and the assorted crises in the Middle East and North Africa. To begin with, I just saw it as a comment of, uh, on a very interesting topic. Um, and then as time goes on, you suddenly realise just the scale of um, what's happening. Uh, and I realised I was in quite a unique position uh, because I was the only migration focused correspondent perhaps in the world, to my knowledge. Um, and I was travelling to all these different countries, meeting all these different people and seeing very much a 360 degree picture of what was going on. And um, encountering all these epic stories, the, you know, the book is called The New Odyssey for a good reason because all these people are going on these incredible journeys, um, uh, epic literary journeys that you would normally associate with um, something out of ancient myth perhaps, but yet it's in the here and now. So um, I realised it was something that w would benefit a, a book form rather than just a series of articles. And above all this is a book about people, about humans like me and you who have been forced out of their homes uh, for reasons that they can't control and they're going on these epic journeys to places unknown that maybe they don't particularly want to go to but they don't really have any choice. Um, and so this, there's one character in particular, Hashim, who um, we follow every other chapter and, and we, are, we go to understand his motivations, his family, um, why he left Syria and then we follow him as he goes across the Mediterranean and through Europe. Um, in the run-up to the Second World War, when it was becoming clear that um, uh, there, was a, there was a Jewish refugee crisis in the 1930s, uh, Western countries met at a conference in Evian in southern France to talk about what they could do about um, uh, Jewish refugees. And they, after several days of meetings, they decided to do nothing. And I was reminded of this recently when uh, the Brits decided not to take just 3,000 unaccompanied minors um, from Europe at a time when we know there are probably 10,000 missing kids out there who are being abused, put into slave labour, raped, um, and we're doing nothing. So I feel like we're very much in, in that environment of people being turned back from borders. Um, Europe, you know, the world's wealthiest con continent, deciding that it's, it's better to outsource this problem to countries that have got far fewer resources to deal with it. Um, and that's a real ethical crisis and I think for that reason we need to take a long, hard look at ourselves and make sure we're not falling into the same traps that we fell into in the 30s. But it's not just an ethical problem. Uh, I think we're also making practical mistakes. I think there's, an, there's just as much a practical argument for, for establishing more formal routes for refugees to get to Europe um, as there is an ethical argument. It's not just about ethics, it's about the fact that people are going to keep coming whether we like it or not. And the longer we take to establish formal mechanisms for them to get here, the more chaotic it's going to be and the harder it's going to be not just for the people that are coming but for the people that are already here, i.e. indigenous Europeans. When I said, look, you're not going to get asylum in Europe, they couldn't have cared less. They said, well, we are coming. You're going to have to find a way of making this work. Um, and so that, that's kind of my message also to Europeans, to Americans, to people in the global north. People are coming, so we haven't got the choice of just pretending we can stop them because they will come. Let's try and work out a way of um, compromising and helping everyone benefit from this. No one benefits if you've got migrants dying in trucks in Austria in a lay-by or drowning in the sea. That's not what anyone wants, but there has to be a middle ground between that and no migration at all. And I think it involves creating formal routes and, and legal mechanisms for people to reach Europe in safety. We need to realise that humans move. We always have and we always will. Um, it's basically the story of humanity, that people migrate, people move between places and you can't really stop them. So we might as well try and manage it a bit better.